But just like the seasons, it's time for a change and I wanna try something else. It's time to try out R1 Power, baby. Let's get this thing installed and let's see what it can do. I'm Chad, this is the Dorky N40 RC channel and we are gonna make you faster today. So I gotta admit, there is something special offhand by just holding this black paper towel roll in your hand. You may have seen these online. This is the R1 three turn motor with the 13 and a half rotor. This is the basic one that you can get off of their store. Pretty much is what you want from all I can gather for a good overall experience. And of course we have the R1 Digital 3 ESC, which right now is the reigning undisputed champion. Nobody can argue that it's won all the big races. Now that could change in a heartbeat, of course, but we're gonna give it a shot. We also got their big mega 30 cat pack, not the 60, didn't have those in stock, but this should be plenty well enough. This is a very large pack. And R1 works exclusively in a wireless configuration with a very awesome application that they have that probably has more settings in it that we will ever need. So we're gonna do this all together. I actually haven't opened this thing up yet at all. And if, here is the R1 ESC inside of its box. You know, offhand, it's just an ESC in a box, no big deal. Does not come with a connector soldered on. It does come with a cat pack already on it. And I believe what we're going to be doing is just go ahead and replacing that or running the other one in line with it as well. Now, some people go ahead and change out all of these wires. I believe this is 12 gauge wire and a lot of people go right off the bat and change these out to 10 gauge. I'm not going to do any of that yet. I'm definitely a big believer in using the bigger wires now with all the current and amp draw and stuff like that. But you know, R1 actually, a lot their team drivers don't even use QS8 connectors. So if they're using XT90, then I'm pretty sure this is gonna work at least until we make sure that this stuff all fires up correctly so we don't void our warranty immediately. So you get a power switch and a fan in the box, which we're not gonna be using the fan and we're not gonna be using the power switch either. Tim at Barth Racing Concepts has made an actual extra power switch for me, a lot bigger, a lot more robust. Evidently the power switches on these go bad quite regularly. Uh, so that's kind of a weird thing to happen, but it does. And inside is of course the three turn motor, which R1 is using pretty much exclusively in a lot of their cars. I'm sure some people are using something bigger, but we just don't know. The can timing out of the box is set to, looks like it's set to about 20 degrees and I've heard some people raise that up. Mark Vine says as high as 40. We'll probably just uh, raise ours a little bit more conservatively and probably just start that at 30 degrees on the can. I've never really ran a motor with a, a lower can timing, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it looks okay. It's a three turn motor. Now, when we wire up the Digital 3 ESC, we are gonna have to be a little bit careful because if you look at the back of the ESC here, you're gonna see that the wires are actually in a CBA configuration, not your normal ABC type of deal. So things are kind of flipped around. And I guess it depends on how you wanna install this in your car, how you would actually have those kind of flipped around, but it's just something to be aware of. The actual ESC, I believe, comes in default CBA mode and you can switch that back and forth. So we'll cover that and make sure that that doesn't confuse anybody, including myself. All right, so everything is soldered or soldered up, however you wanna say it, whatever part of the world you are from. We got the QS8 connector on there and we've replaced the power switch with the Barth Racing Concepts power switch. That's real easy to do. And we got the cat pack installed and we left the original one on there too. Cat pack is just installed right underneath here. There's plenty of room to solder underneath there. Make sure you plug your sensor wire in first and you don't burn it. So that way you can get that in easily. And I kind of have mine set up. I want to try to like balance this out a little bit. You know, it's the whole point of the DC one chassis. Now, if you look at the, my five star here, I've got these holes cut out. So I don't really have a lot of like left to right bias, but I'm gonna try to work with what I got and try to stagger them just a little bit. The ESC itself weighs 100 grams and the cat pack weighs about 40 grams with the wires cut off here. So 
I think I can go ahead and stagger things a little bit and then we could do the receiver on one side with the cat pack and uh, yeah, we'll be okay. All right, so it would seem that we have a full power going on now. So we got a little bit of forward and we got reverse. So obviously I need to set this stuff back up in the Sanwa and we need to go into the ESC and do some programming. So now that we have everything hooked up, mounted and all that good stuff, let's go into the R1 Works application and get this thing configured for our first run. We ended up going with 93, we ended up going with 93.17 on the gearing and uh, couldn't get a 96 spur to fit on there. So I think that'll be okay. We'll see what happens because we'll have instant data logging. Okay, so we're all connected up here and i've got the m17 back to set up how i want it with my custom menu system so running uh 95 uh dual rate hard for to see here at the camera uh I, just a slow 96 ramp a 20 percent point and a 10 percent curve Obviously we can do more adjustments to the radio and we can do a ton here in the ESC. So under the general settings, of course, we went through all this stuff before. LiPo, we disabled the cutoff voltage. Motor direction normal is good. We are running a tool, two pole motor. Gear ratio and tire diameter, I haven't put those in and we didn't need to change anything on our cutoffs or anything else like that. When it comes to throttle, so this is where we get into the whole tuning stuff. And this is stuff that I'm not going to really cover right now. I'm going to go through it probably when we get outside and start doing all that kind of stuff. So we're just leaving everything at default right now. This is going to be all changed when we start changing turbo and settings in the Sanwa and everything else and even pinions as well. Reverse, we wanted to set up, and there's a lot of different reverse modes. So I'm going with the two way, which is basically your forward, and then when you let off, it actually immediately applies how much drag brake that you have set in there. And you can also set a delay as far as how long it will let you to hammer on your reverse. So that way, if you've got a, a bad habit of hitting your brake really hard and it actually going into reverse, this will kind of give you some protection. So basically what's gonna happen is it's not gonna let me actually switch to reverse until 2.5 seconds after I let off the throttle. So that is like their default setting and we'll leave that there as well. Um, M reverse amount is actually the actual reverse speed between 20 and 100%. So it's kind of one of those fuzzy math numbers. I don't need a lot of reverse speed, so I'll have it dialed down in here all the way, and then I can also dial down more in the Sanwa. When it comes to brakes, I haven't changed anything, of course, except for I bumped the drag brake up to 5%. I notice at least here on the bench, that 5% is a pretty hefty, uh, amount it works just fine uh typically i would run anywhere between like 15 and 20 depending upon the shutdown uh but it seems to really uh stop the tires pretty good um even at five percent if i just give it some throttle here and you can watch the tires yeah that's pretty good and of course we're going to leave everything else at defaults right now um when it comes to the different fre frequencies these are things that control power hit all that kind of stuff if you're if you've never ran a hob like something like a hobby wing that has all of these controllers and like a buggy you know the, you might not you might be a little confused by some of this stuff so just leave it at default eventually things like this can get into improving your actual tune when we start messing with the motor frequency especially but you can also create heat. You can get rid of heat by changing different parameters uh, up and down the, the scale, but we're basically just gonna leave it. Actually, I'm probably gonna just go ahead and put it in the middle to 8K, and then we're gonna hit the save button, and that is where we're gonna leave it. Now down here is where we're actually gonna be doing our turbo and boost stuff. And when we get out of the field, obviously I'll have to screen record this for you guys so you can see my settings and everything. But right now, we're just running on complete end bell timing, nothing at all. This is how you set all that stuff up. It's as simple as pressing and turning on the boost. 
whatever you want to do. So if we want to turn on boost, we've got boost right here. Here is our RPM range, 5,000 to 25,000. You basically could just type in there and you can start changing your RPM ranges. So we can move that up if we want to, to 7,000. We can change this to say 30,000, or we can actually go in here and I think, well, we won't let you type anything in. Well, there might be a more granular way to figure that out. We'll work on that later. And then up here is where you would actually put in your boost and turbo amounts. So if you want to actually start adding in your boost and turbo amount, this is where you do it. So right now we don't have any boost set up, just turbo. So we can start increasing the turbo if we want to. And that is gonna all apply within the actual range here. Still gotta look at this and kind of like get a little handle for it. Don't know why we don't have a boost box. If we click on throttle, you can see we've got some other things that we can do as far as applying it to throttle. And then Mark Vine did say that he was using the auto throttle. So, you know, again, you've got more of an RPM based boost here, which is similar to like how Tekken runs. And then you have the throttle percentage based boost in turbo, which is similar, which basically is, Oh, it's kind of combination of everything. So it's going to use basically what you have in your Sanwa and it's going to work in combination with that. So from what I understand, whatever amount and percentages and stuff you put in here, it actually will apply a different percentage of all that stuff that you could based on what you want. So at like 10,000 RPMs, if you are at 20% throttle, you can basically tell it that you want 20% of the boost, which, you know, depending upon that number, let's say it's 10, so you would get four. But then there's other situations where if you put in a maximum amount of, say, 10, it would only apply a percentage of that. So it could get a little fuzzy and a little complicated. That's why people sell R1 tunes with complete R1 systems. But you could just see how you can fine tune everything inside the system. And really that is the key to it. You know, this power curve setting here is just amazing stuff when you can actually go in here and start building your power curve. And this is stuff that a lot of ESCs do, but they are not as granular and fine controlled as this. You know, on the castle, I can move mine up and down like a percentage point. In my Sanwa, I can move my throttle curves up and down a percentage point, but only 10%. With this, I can actually take this point right here, which is at 25%, and it will actually go up if I want to in, in 0.1 increments. And you can basically do all that kind of stuff right here. You can do sliders, just all kinds of stuff. You can reset it, put in different kind of curves, all that kind of stuff. Of course, we're going to cancel it out and just go back into the basic one right now. And, uh, you know, again, we're going to need to get a little bit of a handle on this, but you can see here that you can basically preset and define um, multiple different profile curves for yourself. So once you kind of get, it depends on if you want to do tuning in here or do tuning in your radio or a combination of both. So it probably seems a little complicated and overwhelming. I'm a little overwhelmed right now, to be quite honest, but I know that like we can just make small strides out there and get this car down the road and everything will be fine. And in the end, we are gonna make like amazing power. So we'll go over all of these actual terms in more in depth. You know, there's a lot of content that I'm still trying to like learn about. I've seen uh, James Dibble post multiple explanations of what all this stuff done does. Mark Vine did a video on it. The video is a great video that he did at the Desert Hobbies, but I feel like he really it wasn't as precise as it needed to be because he didn't reference things to the sand wall the way he should have had his radio there with him. He admitted it. So seeing how the two work together is the key, but you also need to understand the true definitions of what these numbers are doing. And that's what Dibs did on the R1 Facebook group.
So that's just a quick start of how everything gets set up and is working and looking and all that kind of stuff just to kind of give everybody a fresh idea and update. I don't want to bullshit you around through like different numbers and definitions that I don't even know yet. So hopefully I can learn those in like the next two to three to five hours of testing before we actually go and run this thing at the racetrack tomorrow. So we've got the car that's basically completely rebuilt again, and we've got a new power system. So we better hope we can make some actually good hits today. I'm going to take you guys along for the journey. Wish me luck. We will talk to you all later. Love you all. Peace.